Hey everyone, I'm Jenny from the channel This Story Ain't Over, and today I'm at the Netflix Icon Building to react to scenes from Bridgerton Season 2. Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel This Story Ain't Over. Today I am starting a vlog that I am so freaking excited to film. I got the coolest email at like 10 p.m. on Tuesday night, which is I think February 15th. So I was like editing a video and I checked my phone and I have this notification and it says Bridgerton Netflix opportunity and I'm like what? So I checked the email and basically it said that Netflix wanted to fly me to LA, Los Angeles, to film a video for their still watching Netflix YouTube channel, which is basically the channel for extra content about their shows. And this one would be a react to Bridgerton video. So this is me on Saturday, February 19th. I am flying out to LA next Thursday. Originally they were gonna fly me in on Thursday and fly me back on Friday, but I asked them to extend the trip to Monday so that I could have a weekend in LA, see the sights, and also just have some extra time. So I'm so excited for this trip. I also don't have a valid passport at the moment, so I have a passport appointment on Monday to renew that. I am getting my nails done next week and my hair done next week. And I also spent this entire morning today filming videos so that I would not be behind on everything when I can't film next weekend. But yeah, I'm gonna be like vlogging this entire experience and seeing how it goes. So I'm super, super excited for it. And overall, this is just like super, super cool. This is like the coolest opportunity I've ever gotten because of this YouTube channel and because of all of you who watch my stupid videos of me talking about books and it just, I'm just so excited. So yes, I'm flying out Thursday afternoon and we are doing the shoot Friday. I believe in the morning, I'm still waiting for final details, but it's gonna be in the Netflix studio in Hollywood. And a part of the condition of this opportunity was that I had to have read the second Bridgerton book, The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is Anthony's story, which inspires the second season of the show. And I have to have read this before being there for the shoot. So those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that I actually haven't read this yet. I recently hauled both the first and second book, but I have watched the first season and I absolutely loved it. And it was like my favorite thing. I binged the entire thing on like Christmas when it came out. So I'm definitely a huge fan of Bridgerton. I just haven't read the books. And I bought them recently before this opportunity ever came about because I wanted to read them before the second season came out. So this entire thing ended up being a perfect work of fate because now I'm gonna be spending the weekend slash week reading the two books in the Bridgerton series before I land in LA on Thursday. So I've already started the first book, Duke and I, and it's already going fantastic. Let me tell you, I didn't actually expect to like this that much. I'm not gonna lie. I knew these were romance books, Regency romance books, but I feel like I have this own internal bias, which is really bad that since it was a romance book and one of those mass market romance books, like when it was originally published, that it wouldn't be great literary quality, but it is, it's fantastic. And all of the things that I love about the show, Daphne's amazing character and sort of her sarcastic humor and Simon's like cute quips and stuff. And like, just like the looks that they give each other, I can see it all in the book. I'm about 90 pages into this. I'm listening to the audiobook as well, which is, Fantastic, by the way, you should definitely listen to the audiobook if you're planning to read the book because I feel like it just adds to the vibe. But already I'm loving this because partly it really feels like the show. The show captured this book so well, like the dialogue, the way that the characters act on page, the actors managed to capture that. They really captured the essence of these characters in the book. So I feel like it's actually a really amazing adaptation now reading this book in the aftermath. And it could be that like, having seen the show, it's coloring my perception of the book. But regardless, I'm still loving it. I do know that there are like slight differences from the book to the show. Like I love that it is a bit of like Gossip Girl and like Pride and Prejudice, but we also get to see these like diverse actors on screen. And while it is like a colorblind casting, I think it's still exciting to have this like fantastic romance drama and see characters that look like us. So I'm particularly excited for the second season because our main 
female character is a woman of color and she is also South Asian and that has me so freaking excited because you guys know I'm South Asian so I always love seeing that representation especially in TV and movies because I feel like they're so few and far between aside from you know international films and stuff like I watch talent movies on the regular but it's not the same as seeing them in like the regular media that I consume on a daily basis in English media. So regardless, super excited all around. I feel like I'm talking really fast and I apologize for those of you who are coming to my channel and being like, what is this, you know, motor mouth doing? But I'm really excited. So yeah, I'm 90 pages into this. I'm going to be reading more of this today for the rest of the day. I think I might be going out with some friends in the evening, but my goal is to get at least two thirds into the book today so that I can finish this tomorrow, which will be Sunday. My schedule is pretty open tomorrow because I cleared out some of my plans that I originally had so I would have time to read before I actually head out to LA. But after that, Monday is a holiday. Tuesday and Wednesday, I've got work. I also have to go to the passport office on Monday for my passport renewal appointment and hopefully I get it in time before this flight or else this is gonna be really, really sad. So stay tuned. I feel like Knowing me, I'm going to be like finishing the second book on the plane, but that's fine as long as I finish it before I land. That's all that matters. And I also am really curious to see how things go in the second book because I know what happened in the first book because like I've seen the first season, but this will be like a whole new thing for me, whole new story. I do have friends who have read the entire Bridgerton story and they said that the second book was actually their favorite out of all of them. So that has me really hyped. And I'm also interested to see if I'm actually going to like Anthony after reading this book because in the show I don't particularly love him. He's not my favorite. He's a little bit annoying. He is similar in like the book so far but I'm curious to see if he has like some interesting character growth in this book. So overall super excited. Just losing my marbles right now. I couldn't sleep for like two days. So that's you know where we're at and yeah I've been like operating on low sleep but getting all of the things done, girl bossing away so that we can go to LA. I will get back to you when I get further into The Duke and I, or maybe when I finish it, and then we'll see how the rest of this goes. So The Duke and I is going great, but I was searching up the cast of season two of Bridgerton, and I just realized that Simone Ashley, who is the main actress for season two, is actually Tamil. She's Tamil. She's Tamil Indian. She's from the UK, I believe, Camberley, Surrey in specific, but her background is Tamil, which is so cool because I'm Tamil Sri Lankan, but she's Tamil Indian but still super cool. Also, she's only two years older than me, which is just tragic because I could be in Bridgerton, but I'm not. So sadly, here we are. But I just thought that was so cool and I wanted to tell you about it and I'm just so excited for this. Hello, my friends. It is Sunday, February 16th, and I finished the first book in the series. I finished it last night. It was really good reading a day yesterday, and I was just like listening to the audiobook and just doing other things and packing for the trip and that kind of thing. And I tabbed so many places in the book as I was like encountering details that were different from the show or if there was anything interesting or important moments that I wanted to remember. And it was interesting reading this because it's like both very very similar to the show but also slightly different in the fact that the show has a lot more extra content and things going on with the side characters and things that we learn about them. I feel like the book is a lot more focused on the specific main couple and main storyline going on which totally makes sense. I just thought that because the book was quite long that it would have more but one thing I really love about just like the author's writing style and the book overall is just the banter and like the conversations that the characters have and their little quips and stuff. I do feel like there was a little bit more of like a build-up in the relationship in the show just because there's more time for it. I think it was like obviously not as exciting because I already knew what was going to happen, but it was still really enjoyable. One thing I'm curious about though is whether the extra content in the show comes from other books in the series or if it's like completely new stuff. I feel like there was like a whole plot line with Colin in the first season that like we don't even get a hint of in this book. So I'm curious to 
learn more about that and whether that's something that we learned in like Colin's book in the series or if it's just something that was added for the show. Regardless, the show overall felt a lot more dramatic and obviously a lot more like Gossip Girl-esque. They really play up the Lady Whistledown storyline and like aspect of the show. So yeah, that's my thoughts on like this first book. It was fantastic. Really great start to a series. And I also feel like if you're just the type of person who likes like romances, historical romances, this is a great book regardless. And just so, so much fun. So I finished this last night and it's about 2 p.m. right now on Sunday. And I started this this morning and have been listening to the audiobook while I was doing my makeup. And it's already fantastic. I'm loving the vibes. I think I mentioned this earlier, but Anthony's not my favorite. I didn't really like him in the show. He was equally annoying in the book and he's sort of like arrogant and self-important and all of that. But I can see how he could be redeemed and sort of be fallen for. And so this is his story. One thing I'm really enjoying like right off the bat, the book sort of opens up with Anthony's backstory. And we learn a lot more about their father, the Bridgerton father, which is Edmund. And I think in the first book and even in the first season, not much is mentioned about him because he died and like that's about it, but we never really learn how he died. So right at the beginning of this book, we learned that he died from a bee sting and that Anthony, you know, was really close with him and really looked up to him. And that's part of his like psychosis and the reasons for why he is the way he is now. One other aspect to this that I'm realizing is that in the first season, we have this sort of tension between Violet and Anthony, like his mother and him. And that's not really present in the books so far at least. And the entire time I was reading this, I was like, wow, the series has a real thing for guys with daddy issues, but just regardless, really funny. But the highlight of this book so far has been Kate for sure, our main girl, love interest, main character. She's fantastic. I already love her sense of humor, the way she is, the way that she dislikes Anthony. And it, this is definitely a like enemies to lovers or like hate to love romance, it seems like it's gonna be. Basically the premise is that Anthony is deciding that he wants to get married finally. And so he's just like, I'm gonna pick the most like eligible woman in the town and I'm gonna marry her. And so that happens to be Kate's younger sister, Edwina, who is actually her stepsister, which is something I didn't know. Based on the casting of the second season, I believe both of the like actresses for Kate and Edwina have the same background. They're both Thummel. Maybe it's just like, you know, they're still stepsisters. But I just thought that that was interesting because there is like this element in the book of them playing up the fact that Kate and Edwina look very different and that Edwina is much more beautiful and gorgeous. Whereas I feel like in the show, both actresses are equally beautiful. So I wonder if they're gonna change the aspect of them being step siblings. But yes, back to the plot. Anthony has decided that Edwina is the most eligible woman in the ton. And so he's gonna marry her. And so he's trying to court her. And obviously Kate is like, no, you're a rake. This is a bad idea. And also as part of this, Edwina made this like sweeping declaration at one of the events or something that she wouldn't marry a man unless her sister approved of him. And so this is part of Anthony's problem. He has to sort of woo Kate as well to want him to marry her sister. So this is just shaping up to be a really interesting situation. I'm about 50 pages in and it's already fantastic. And I've tabbed so many places because there's so many things I want to remember, but overall loving it and curious to see where it's gonna go. There have been mentions of the other characters as well and like the siblings and stuff but not as much I feel like as we get in the show and sort of the side stories that we get so I'm also curious to see how the side stories are going to develop in the second season which very very excited for. I'll probably get through the rest of this today and tomorrow I have a passport appointment tomorrow at two hopefully that goes well and then I'll be off to LA on Thursday and I'll definitely have finished this before then but I'm hoping to re-watch the first season of the show before I land in LA or before the shoot on Friday because I feel like I'm a little fuzzy on some of the details of like the extra things that happen so I want to refresh on those hello my friends it is a new day it is Sunday no Monday February 21st it is a holiday here in Canada. It's family day, so I have the day off. It's my dad's birthday. I just had lunch with my family and I had a passport appointment to get my renewed passport so I can go on this damn trip. And it went well, we're good. I'm picking up the passport on Wednesday, the day before I fly out, which is exciting and also stressful. But I'm gonna be leaving work and grabbing that on Wednesday. So very happy about that, that all this is working out. I am currently halfway through The Viscount Who Loved Me. I am on page 246. 
this book is about 420 ish pages so we're doing good in progress i feel like since the last time i updated you a lot has progressed in the relationship of anthony and kate basically they start off in sort of an enemies lovers or like hate to love situation and they're definitely moving towards the friendship part of that you know progression and i'm loving it one thing i'm finding interesting is that i had actually started re-watching season one with my boyfriend and as we were watching i was like this doesn't happen in the book and that doesn't happen in the book and this doesn't happen in the book and i was also realizing that anthony is slightly less annoying in the books i think the show sort of amplifies characteristics about him that we don't get to see in the first book so after having read the first book and watching season one and re-watching it i was like oh he seems like more of an ass than he actually is in the first book which some things that happen in the first season don't actually happen in the first book so i feel like it paints him as like slightly more of an overbearing brother than he actually is in the books at least but i'm sort of seeing some of that in like the behind the scenes in the second book like hearing his thoughts you can see how he's a bit of that overbearing brother so yeah overall i'm like liking this he's also a bit of a hypocrite as well so anthony's not my favorite person but if the show can convince me to love him by the end of season two i will be very impressed so far i'm liking him more than i did at the beginning of the book where i am in the middle of it so hopefully i'll love him by the end of the second book i love kate though and i love her sister edwina i love everything going on there i particularly love call as well like just based off of seeing him in the first and second book i just love him and his character and the way he is so that's fun and yeah those are all my thoughts i think right now i'm very excited that i've gotten this passport or that like it's gonna work out and then i'm gonna have it before thursday when i fly out and i'm gonna go home now and spend some time with family and also pack and read more of the viscount who loved me and i will definitely finish this probably either tonight or tomorrow. And then we'll be all ready for the shoot on Friday. I'm also gonna see if I can finish rewatching season one before my flight on Thursday. We'll see how that goes. It's probably not gonna be possible, but we'll see. Hello, my friends. It is very late at night. It is like basically 12 a.m. on Thursday. It is like, basically 3 a.m. Toronto time, so I am literally dying here. But I needed food, so I got McDonald's after my flight and landing and all that. I feel like the flight was just super long and I'm just super tired. So I'm gonna eat and then I'm gonna take off my makeup and then I'm gonna sleep. Also, I did not wear makeup for this vlog. I had to wear makeup for a thing this morning before my flight and didn't have the time to take it off. And now I'm really regretting that. But it's fine. We're here. It's all gonna work out. The shoot tomorrow isn't until the afternoon for me. So I will be rested and just happier tomorrow. That's my update for now. I will talk to you more tomorrow. Hello, my friends. I just woke up. It is like 9 a.m. ish on Friday, February 25th. I had a fitful night of sleep but we're making it through. I have been called to the studio for 1 p.m. and I'm bringing multiple different outfit options because they told us to do that and I hope they work because I got a bunch of like Bridgerton inspired outfits sort of like these pastel-y pinks and blues and purples and I got cute shoes. I went really overboard like I took the chance to shop. I'm gonna return anything that I don't end up using but yes so i'm very excited about that i'm gonna take all those with me uh they told us to arrive with a bare face so that they can do hair and makeup for us which is exciting so yeah i'm hoping to grab some sort of lunch shower and then head over to the studio at one but before that i want to tell you my final thoughts on the viscount who loved me by julia quinn i actually quite enjoyed this i don't think i loved it so so much I think there's something about these shows that's really exciting because they add extra sort of content for the other characters and extra storylines which make it a little bit more interesting. You guys know I'm not like an avid romance reader, like I'm not usually reading romance and part of that is because I like having like lots of subplots and other stuff going on. In my books I read a lot of fantasy so that's just an aspect to it but regardless this is still really good. Like I really really love the way that the author writes banter between the characters 
and the way that they just like flirt and talk to each other like I love it so so much and I think that's one thing that I wish they had more of in the shows I feel like in the shows they have a lot of like sexual tension but there's less talking involved and I feel like I love the talking in the books. I will say that this book was a little bit less frustrating than the Duke and I just because of the reasons for why they like don't want to be together are less annoying but I mean the Duke and I it's understandable because Simon has this like childhood trauma so like I understand why it happens but it was just like frustrating to watch. This book I feel like Anthony sort of comes to realize the errors of his ways and leap forward for his happiness a little quicker which i liked i will say that like the sort of last act of the book had less of a tense and sort of dramatic climax to it than the first book did so i'm curious to see if they're going to add anything to that in the show like i feel like they're definitely going to play up some aspects of this but also throw in some extra curveballs because one thing i actually noticed while i was um re-watching parts of the first season was that the whole prince storyline in the first season does not happen in the first book which i completely didn't realize as i was reading it i was like oh yeah all well, this makes sense okay cool and then i realized like rewatching parts of the show that they added in this whole storyline and like you know other love interests and i get why they did it because it adds like extra tension so like those things were really fun and i'm excited to see what they're gonna throw in for this book in the second season but yeah overall just really excited to see scenes from this book. There were quite a few that I really like. I really want to see the Paul Mall scene because that was just so much fun. I just love the different characters coming together and the banter and all of that. So that's the scene I'm most excited to see, but I don't know if they'll let us react to that one today. Yeah, very excited for that and very excited for like the dynamic between all the characters. I love all the actors. I did find myself like imagining the actors in the roles in this book and when I was reading The Duke and I. I think just because I've seen the show before the books but yeah, it was really fun. But yes, those are my sort of final thoughts on this. I really liked, you know, Kate as a character. I feel like Anthony gets better as he goes. I still don't love him that much. Like he's definitely not my favorite character. He's a bit of a hypocrite but it was still a cute romance, really fun. And I found myself just like wanting to know more about the other siblings. I think I really, really want to see Benedict and uh, Eloise's stories and also Penelope's stories. So I ended up buying like the next four Bridgerton books they're waiting for me at home in Toronto. And I'm probably gonna read them at some point or like before the next season. I just really want to know like more about their stories. And I wonder like how much of the show actually draws from the later books because that's one thing I'm really curious about whether some of the stuff that we're seeing with Penelope right now are actually stuff that happened in her book later in the series so I cannot wait to react to scenes of this it's gonna be so much fun I think I am the last on the call sheet for today there's like four other people before me so I'm definitely like the last one to the party but that's fine I'm very excited I've also had a really long night so I'm glad my call time is much later yeah I'm so excited and like I'm also excited to see like what outfit I end up in and which one they end up choosing and how everything ends up like turning out I think this is gonna be really fun so yeah I'm just so excited that is all I have for this update I'm gonna go shower take my COVID test grab some food and then head off to the shoot I will vlog heading off to the shoot and as much as I can in the Netflix studio I will be filming and you know trying to get the behind the scenes for you. Netflix is also going to be shooting some behind the scenes and shooting like some photos as well so I'll have all of that. As well. Okay fit check. I'm wearing this little brown jacket over this white crop top and then I'm wearing my baggy jeans with the rip in them and then you can see my cute little toes here but I'm going to be wearing my Air Forces today. And I'm going to take my duffel bag of all my outfit options for this shoot and we'll see how I go. Hello my friends, we're here, we have made it to Netflix! Um, here, here is a chair that says Netflix on the back, can you see that? And this is me, and I am here next to it. What, what has the world come to? What has it come to? I am here. I am so freaking excited. I'm going to show you this little waiting room that they put me in. Um, we've got little treats over here we've got some cute plants we've got the bag of outfits i brought we picked one just now with um the head producer of the production today which is mary got some drinks in here 
don't know what this is. Oh, hand sanitizer. Very nice. And then we've got a mirror. So I'm going to change into the outfit I'm going to be wearing for the shoot today. And then hair and makeup will be in about 20, 25 minutes, I think. I am very, very excited. <laughs> also, let's appreciate this Andrew Garfield magazine here on the table. Just love this so much. Hello, my friends. I am waiting for hair and makeup and I've changed into my outfit. So already I just met Melissa, who is a bookstagrammer, who is also going to be part of this. I also learned that I'm going to get to ask the author some questions at the end of this, which is really exciting. So I was writing down some questions I want to ask her and just overall cannot wait. This is insane. How did you get into uh, booktubing? Ooh, that's a good question. It was like four years ago. I was in university and I used to watch booktube like for years before this, all through high school. So I loved the concept of it. And then I just thought it'd be kind of cool to start my own channel and like join the community. When did uh, Bridgerton come into the mix for you? Oh my God, the second it came out. I binged that first season on like Christmas day, I think. Because <laughs> uh, I just loved the entire concept and was just so excited by like the diverse main leads and stuff. And I just have always loved like Jane Austen and like Regency era romances. So yeah, the entire concept just like hooked me from the beginning. It also felt a little bit like Gossip Girl, which I love. I have a feeling that Eloise's story is gonna be my favorite because I love her as a character. And every time she shows up in the first two books and also in the show, I've just loved every minute of her screen time. So I'm excited to see how she falls in love. Did you have a favorite moment from uh, Bridgerton season one? Oh, I think it's the moment where they're in the gallery and they're sort of standing next to each other and like the romantic and sexual tension is just like off the charts and they like briefly touch hands slash hold hands before they're called um, away to the ballroom when I think like that random girl faints in front of the prince. But I love that moment of tension. It was just like so well done and the chemistry was amazing. This was like sort of a very unique experience. I've never done something like this before. I obviously appear on camera a lot for my YouTube channel, but yeah, this is like one of those rare experiences. I did do a react to Shadow and Bone last year, which was a lot of fun, but that was like from my own home. So this is the first time I've like flown out somewhere and done something big. <laughs> Do you have any insane predictions for season two that like maybe not be grounded in anything, but that, you know, Ooh. you're just gonna go out there and say, I think this is gonna happen. Based on the second book, I feel like, cause in the first season they added in the prince as like their, you know, second love interest. I feel like they could add something in with a Kate and Colin thing in the second season. I would also really be excited to see more of uh, Kate's younger sister Edwina's like love story because it's like so short at the end of book two So getting to see more of that like woven in from the beginning would be exciting Seems yeah, I yeah. thought that that was like a really plausible Right, one. she listens to everyone yeah. Tea. Yeah, and then there's like that part where we figure out that she's like faking the accent and everything Yeah, and, yeah, so I was like I was convinced like, oh, it was her. Yeah, for sure. Penelope was probably the last person I would have thought of, but Same. reading the books, I feel like I would have caught on to the fact that it might be Penelope, just oh. because she's significantly like mentioned. And like the side characters in general, like are a huge part of the books as mm -hmm. they are in the show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like 
I would have guessed it maybe. Cute. Two minutes. Yeah, take your time. Thank you. It's Isn't gonna like cute? her. It's so good. Yeah, everyone wanted a wave or a straight. I'm like, <laughs> no, this is calling for cute. <laughs> <laughs> It feels so light. I don't know what it is, like Sailor Moon or something. Hello. Oh my god, camera to camera. Yeah, let me go. And going up. Love how you're filming me. Yeah. No, it, it gets very meta. There's a photographer that's going to be taking pictures of you that I'm going to be videographing. Yeah. I love it. A question from a fan. We should see okay. what people have to say. So seeing your book series adapted for screen, what has been your favorite addition that they've made to the show? That one is so easy. It is the queen. I may be American, but I now want a queen and I want that queen to be Golda Rocheville and I want her to be my queen forever. Mm. Hello friends, it's Jenny from the future interrupting here to explain a few things before I get into the rest of the behind the scenes of what happened at Netflix. So as you're gonna see in a second, I'm entering the room where we're gonna be filming for the video. And I want to preface this by saying that originally we thought that the video was gonna be like just one reaction video, like fans reacting to Bridgerton, but they ended up using some of those clips and stuff for another video with the author getting interviewed by the host of the Netflix book club. So we're appearing in that video, but we're also appearing in another video potentially in the near future. I'm not sure if that one will have gone up by the time that this one goes up, but just know that beyond that like one question I ought to ask in the video with the interview with Julia Quinn, there is more that I did like film with Netflix. So with that out of the way, another thing that I wanted to explain before we get into some of this BTS footage is that in the room, there was actually someone I knew who I didn't know was gonna be there. So this video for the Bridgerton series and on the still watching Netflix show was produced by Big Machine. That's their production company. And the head of that is Mary. And she's the one who contacted me. But some of you may remember that I did a video with Netflix last year for Shadow and Bone, very similar to this, where I got to react to scenes of the show before it had actually come out and I got to see things like early and ahead of time. It was very exciting. But that one I filmed from my own home and I was actually contacted by a different set of people. So I was contacted by Dana from Netflix. She works there and she does a lot of like extra content like this. So I had assumed that she was not part of this new production because Big Machine is the one that contacted me, but it turned out when I entered that room, I actually found out that Dana was part of this production and that she was gonna play a similar role that she did when we did the Shadow and Bone video. So I entered the room and it turns out that she is the person behind the camera asking me questions, prompting me to react to things, which was just really exciting for me because I felt a lot more comfortable knowing that she was there. She was a great person to work with the first time around. So Dana, if you're watching this at any point, thank you, you're awesome. You always laugh at my really ridiculous jokes and I appreciate you. But yes, I just wanted to sort of explain all of that. And so when I get into the room, we're all just talking and setting up. So you're gonna see that in a sec. Okay. Jenny's here. Yay! Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to also Canadian. Nice to meet you in person. I'm yeah. so glad we were able to bring you down for this. Yeah, it's so cool. That's the perfect look. I know, it's so good. I'm obsessed. The purple, no, these are four from Bell. Honest. The dates always change too. Like I'll have like literally like, written down and I'm like, this is when it comes out. And I'm like, it's coming out two years. Yes. I know. Oh, yeah. Um, oh my God. Be careful of the mic when you sit. The hot seat. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I'm going to go. Got it. Right? Jenny, you're from Toronto? Yes. <laughs> it's so funny you guys say Toronto. I know. You're <laughs> the same thing. I'm like, Toronto. Hi, 
Yeah. You don't really say like the last T, so it's like Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. That's how you can tell when someone's not from Toronto. I say it like I'm in Virginia. Toronto. Toronto. I'm from the Toronto. You can call me out by my about. I can call you out by the way you say Toronto. That's fair. How do you say sorry? Sorry. Had you read Bridgerton before? No, I hadn't actually. But it was funny because when you guys contacted me about this, I had just bought the first two books. Oh, perfect. With the intention to read them. Sorry, I keep moving and I'm, you keep moving. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. She's going to adjust you probably like 30 times throughout this conversation. It has been what we've been doing with everyone because green screens are difficult. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Nervous. <laughs> but excited. The setup looks great. Yeah, I know. I love this. Alrighty, so that's where the behind the scenes footage sort of ends. And that's as much as I am able to show you because a lot of the other stuff is going to come up in the other videos. One thing I didn't really get to capture after the entire shoot was that they actually hired a photographer to take photos of us around the studio. And that was actually really cool. I got to take a picture with like the Emmy Awards and the uh, Squid Game Girl. And it was all a lot of fun. I do feel like the lighting was kind of weird at the time that we had to take the photos because it was like afternoon so we were getting like really weird lighting but overall it's still really cool and I can't say I've ever had like a photographer take photos of me like professionally so that was interesting yeah and then I just sort of like hung around the studio I got to meet one of the other people on the video which was Melissa she has a really awesome bookstagram it's called book Rex by Mel I believe I'll leave it linked down below she was fantastic she drove me home from the hotel which was really nice and we just chatted about the entire experience and also just being part of the book community so that that was really nice to just like see another person who is like in a similar situation as me and Mel is wonderful so you should definitely go check out her bookstagram and since this video is going up before the show comes out I can't tell you exactly what scenes I got to react to but I will tell you that it was about I think four or five scenes and they were all fantastic I really enjoyed them I think it got me really excited for the show to come out and just like to see the characters come to life I really really loved seeing Simone Ashley as Kate Sharma and Chartha as Edwina they were fantastic and it was just so great just seeing like dark skinned brown girls like on screen so that was really exciting the chemistry between the characters was fantastic I feel like though and I'm not going to spoil anything but I feel like there's a lot of extra additions with some of the side characters going on that I just cannot wait for. And I also have one theory about them moving a storyline from one of the later books into the second season, which I'm curious to see if they'll actually do or if I'm just like grabbing at straws. But from what I saw, there's a potential for that to happen. There's also one scene that they showed me closer to the end of our hour of shooting where they actually had to skip through like a giant spoiler in that scene that they didn't want me to see in this reaction video, which I thought was really interesting because I feel like it pertained to some of the other characters, like not the main couple. And I feel like it was like an addition to the show that's not in the books, which is why they didn't want me to see it. So I'm very intrigued. And yeah, I just cannot wait for the second season to come out. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this like behind the scenes, Netflix flying me to LA, you know, shooting with Netflix video. I had so much fun. This experience was just so much fun and exciting and something that I wouldn't have gotten to do without all of you supporting me here on my channel. So I just want to say thank you for all that you do and just watching my videos, liking them, commenting, subscribing. If you're new here, welcome. Um, this is a strange video to start off with my channel because I am never this cool, but this was actually a really fun experience and I'm so glad that I got to like capture so much of it on video so that I can like look back and watch this again. But yeah, hopefully more opportunities like this will come my way. And one last thing I want to say is just thank you so much to like the team at Netflix and Big Machine and all the people involved with this whole production and video and everything and you know, all the extra content that they gave me to show to you guys. It was very, very nice and they were all wonderful to work with. So yeah, would definitely do it again. Call me if you guys want another reaction video. Totally up for it. Um, but yeah, it was just fantastic. And just thank you for being so awesome. If you want to continue like keeping up with me on the regular, I highly recommend going and following me on Twitter and Instagram because I often post about my life and the other behind the scenes things going on. And if you want even extra content, I would highly recommend checking out my Patreon down below. It's a wonderful exclusive community where 
you can get extra and exclusive content from me and also like join in on a book club with me and it's all a lot of fun and I just love having like a smaller group of people to chat with so highly recommend checking that out as well. And just as an extra note here if you're looking for more Bridgerton content from me I do have another video coming up very very soon where I'll be reading every book in the series or at least the first five. I might do a part two with the later books in the series with like the younger siblings but that'll be coming very very soon so just watch out for that because I'll be reviewing each book in the series and sort of telling you my thoughts and theories for what they're going to do in the later seasons. When I'm filming the conclusion to this video I'm actually in the middle of Penelope's book in the series which is very exciting so yeah I have a lot of thoughts and theories which I'm excited to share with you very soon. Thank you guys so so much for watching. I will see you in my next video and please remember that this story ain't over. Bye!